So, one word in season is better than 10,000 words out of season. Amen. And what that means is, you know, I can get up here and tell you a lot about what I know and all of this kind of stuff, but unless a word actually speaks to you, That's right. then it's irrelevant. Amen. You'll leave here and, and not receive what it is that God wants to feed you, wants a word to give you. You know, the restaurants opened up and there was a lot of good food, there was a lot of good food up there and you got to choose between what it was that you wanted to eat and that you prefer, right? But that's a good thing when you got a buffet. Everybody don't go to a buffet and eat everything that's on a buffet. There's certain things that you like, certain things that you need and you prefer. Well, in this church, you, you know, there's going to be a lot that comes forward. But I guarantee you today, you're going to get a word from the Lord. You will definitely get a word. And what I mean by that it's better for me to give you one word in season than 10,000 words out of season is that God moves in His seasons and His cycles. That's how He operates. And it's by no coincidence that you guys are here today because this app happens to be one of His seasons and one of His cycles that God has brought you here today because He wants to speak a word to you. I remember one time I spoke about Elijah and how, you know, Elijah called down fire. Well, you know, it's pretty amazing when you know the times and the seasons that you're in and you know how God operates and He moves, well then what he's you know doing is there for you so like you know today you're gonna to find out what today is a lot of things two thousand years ago if we go back today two thousand years ago to a 167 today they were rededicating the temple um, the second temple you know uh, the temple of Zerubbabel they was rededicating it today and what that means is they was putting the house back in order again. They was fixing it up. It had been desecrated. They had sacrificed a pig on the altar and, and went in and removed the lampstand and all the furniture that was inside the house that actually was used for service because that's what the house of God is made for. And the priest that was in the house was to serve God. That's You don't have a house. That's why it's so important to the Jews right now. You know, they can't worship God. Why? Because they don't have a house. They don't have a house to worship God in, meaning they don't have a house to serve in. Well, you and I know that Christ fulfilled that. But this day, if we go back 2,000 years ago, we're going to go back to a time when Judas Maccabee revolted against the Greek and Syrian uh, government, you know, that was ruling at that time. Because what they had did was temple sacrifices and everything was going on. And then Antiochus Epiphanes, you know, said, look, no, you're done. You're not doing it no more. He went there, shut them down, kicked, you know, threw everything out of the temple right to stop the worship because that's the ultimate goal to stop the worship sacrificed a pig on the altar set up a statue of Zeus in the temple and desecrated it right you know it's, it, it's pretty amazing because it was at this time 2,000 years ago that Judas Maccabee today in a big war revolted they was in war for a time and battling and struggling to take the temple back and today they took it back so you go back 2,000 years ago and what they did was they rebuilt the altar. It's pretty crazy. We just rebuilt an altar. They rebuilt the walls. We just built walls and they set up the doors again. Wow, we set the doors in and set everything in order in this physical temple so that worship could begin again. They began to sacrifice so they would have food. Food for what? Food to feed the people. And what were the priests doing? They were serving. That's why God has called all of us to serve. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back 2,000 years ago and show you what today happened on today. Whatever I read and show you, that means God moves in His seasons, in His cycles, in His festivals. That's when He does things. And what I'm talking about is, you know, it's by no coincidence, if it's Passover, Jesus walks in and says, I'm the Lamb. Right? If it's, you know, it's the Feast of Lights, He, he walks in and says, I'm the light of the world. 
He, meaning, that's how he operated. If at the time he's the shepherd, he walks in and says, I'm the shepherd. It, it, and he, he walks in the time, he says, I'm the door. And he only did it in that season. When the Jews' feast of Passover was nigh at hand, Jesus walked out and said, I am the Passover lamb that takes away the sins of the world. So right now, today, today, 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked into the temple. Do you know what he said? Ah, wow. Today. So let's see what happened today. Because everything that happened today is for you. Can Cherie be healed today? Absolutely. Can she be healed today? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Let's see. Now today is actually, they call it in Hebrew, Keslev 25. December 25th. 24th, 25th, right? Actually on Keslev 25, which is this evening at 6 o'clock in the evening, is when they reset the temple up. But some, th but some things were going on for the last couple of months before this happened. There was a lot of war and struggle and battle and all of these things. You find yourself going through some stuff right now? I'm going to let you know and show you. Watch this. Let's look at it real quick. Um, let me just... This is like... This is so absolutely amazing. I remember when the Lord spoke to me, and I'm going to say something about Mr. Ernest Duvall. Mr. Ernest is the one that owns the facility here and, and all of that. And, and you know, it, it, it's pretty amazing that I met him five years ago at this time, you know, and asked him to buy the tables that you guys are sitting at, right, Mr. Ernest? And he was going through a hard time in his life. Well, five years ago at this time, I actually got to pray with him. And when I just came in at the same time ago, in November, five years ago, November, I walked in the door and saw him again and said, hey man, I'm looking for a place. He said, there it is, right next door, it's yours. I was coming home from vacation, right, looking for a house. On my way home, just so happened to stop in here. Didn't know about it before. Had no idea. Didn't know they had a place. And here it is, I walked in. At the same exact time, five years ago, I walk in the door. The same time I asked him for the tables and chairs in November, I walk in November 6th. He says, hey, the place is, is yours right next door. Just like that, he said, it's yours, it's right next door. Now, God was already leading. So is this a time that God leads? Is this a time that the Spirit moves? Well, let me just show you how crazy it is. His name is Ernest Duvall. Ernest Duvall. Ernest means deposit. The Bible says that God has given us a deposit of the Spirit, the earnest of the Holy Spirit. The word Duval is French. Actually means valley, derived from the Hebrew word dove, spirit. Uh, earnest of the Spirit. Where did God lead us to? Well, if you look up there, that name Duval out there means dove. Wow. A leading of the Spirit. A deposit of the Spirit. Did you know that, Mr. Ernest? Wow. I just found that out. I was like three days ago. I'm, you know, my daughter asked me, you know, where's the building at? I said, well, it's on Highway 11. And my wife says, at Duvall's. She just, I didn't even know it. She just pulls up. Wow, you know, Duvall means dove. I'm like, wow, earnest means, a, a, earnest actually means a deposit of. So here it is. Now watch. They don't know anything. Now this is a time of also giving gifts. My daughter doesn't know anything about the leading of the Spirit and what the Lord just showed me that I spoke to you guys Thursday night. Has no idea what I spoke to you. This is what she hands me. Last night. Has no idea. She has no idea. <laughs> a dove a leading of the spirit amazing man <laughs> amazing I get a book handed to me this morning it says the wonders 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 and miracles is this a time of miracles is this a time of wonders let's see 
Also, I'm giving today. Somebody walks up to me and gives me a light. <laughs> right? This is the time at the dedication of the temple they relit the lamps. Festival of lights. Look, listen to me. There's no coincidence in God. He's leading. He's directing. Let's get into the message now. I mean, another lady. Give me a card. You know what God put on her heart? She said, I put a check inside the card. And I just felt like God wanted me to give you this amount. Well, you tell me. Stand up, Denise. What did God speak to you? What he, I said, Lord, what do you want to do? He said, the, what year was the revolt that the Maccabees took back the temple? 167. So that's what I did. And he also, the, one of the quotes, because I was... Pastor, challenge you so much to strip off tradition and do what the Word says. So, the, the quote that really got me, what the Maccabee said was, follow me, all of you who are for God's law, and stand by the covenant. And that's what Pastor does. Amen. Wow, I, she just, that's, good, that's a good stuff right there. But awesome. So let's see what today is. This is really exciting. So today is a day of the leading of the Spirit. A day of the leading of the Spirit, okay? It's Kessler 25. It's a time of faith, a time of believing, and a time of rededication. And if you don't get everything that I, I, I'm speaking, it'll be on YouTube. We'll post it on YouTube. The Citadel Church, Poplarville. Um, you can get it there. It's a time of faith, believing, and rededication. Because you're going to find, if you go back about three months ago, some really some things really started in your life. In some of y'all life that has really got you, you know, going through some things. Battling, struggling. That's why when Ruth, you know, put, posted this thing, she was going through something. You know, it's by no coincidence because this is a time of battle. Well, this is actually the day that God gave them rest. And I, I ain't going to get all into the thing when God spoke to me. But check this out. So, it's a time of faith, a time of believing, and a time of rededication. Right? Let me tell you something. It took a lot of faith to walk through to get to where we are today. Amen. Over the past five years. Amen. I'm not just going back a couple of months. I'll go back five years to the very beginning. The enemy has tried to take us out. I can't even tell you how many times. And you're going to find out what that's about. But if you endure, well then you'll make it. It says, man I just threw this in here. Everybody knows this. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. But the evidence of things you can't see. We was looking for a place here recently. Just like it was when we was looking for a place in the very beginning. Oh, today is a day of new beginnings. Just to let you know. And we'll tie that in. Five years ago when we was looking for a building and we had no money. I'm like, Lord, where are we going to go? And the Lord put us in Poplarville and wound up giving us the back building. Gave us, you know, the, the house for the kids. And gave us the front building. You know, it's like they wanted $1.2 million. And I told the guy... When I walked in there, I said, Mr. Barry Harper, you know, I don't have two nickels to rub together. That's right. But I know that God called me here. He got up and walked out the office on me. Ask my wife. She's sitting with me. I was freaked out. I was freaked out. I looked at her. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I must have insulted him. Barry Harper walked out. I said, well, I guess we go. We got to go. It's time to go. I'm about to get up, turn around, here he comes, walking back. Walk back. When he walked back, he walked in, he sat down behind his desk, he said, open your hand. I opened my hand, boom, he dropped the key in my hand, he said, it's yours. Just like Erna said. Yeah. I'm like, wait, hold a sec, I didn't even tell you what I could pay. I, you know, and what's crazy about that... What's crazy about that was prior to that, I had talked to his daughter on the phone. They wanted 4000 a month for the front building and 3000 a month for the back building. Seven grand. I said, have you lost your mind? I can't afford nothing. I said, look, Barry, I don't have anything. I said, what was given to me was $1,000 that I could pay for, you know, to, uh, for a month's rent. He says, it's yours, take it. 
Go ahead and just do it. It's yours. I don't want to stand in the way nothing God is doing. <laughs> and that's how it happened the first time. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I sat out on that building, my wife and I, through many tears. Yeah. Lord, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? But This is the same time, five years ago, God moved and did something. Yeah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God's doing some stuff. So faith, it's the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. It took a lot of faith to believe. Here recently, God told me to step out and do something that I was totally uncomfortable with. But you know what? He wanted to strengthen and stretch and teach me something. You need to believe him. Like when he called Abraham, step out. Man, let me tell you something. You don't, if you've never, I mean, God is going to stretch you. If you really, you know, don't know what faith is all about, you're going to see in a little bit. Man, let me tell you something. It's easy. Oh, yeah, I walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, yeah. When you're with the Lord, he's going to test that. And it's for a reason, right? All right, what does that mean? What does that mean to, to walk by faith and not by sight? You know, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Moving toward what you believe God has told you, but not having the ability with your, within your own power to even come close to doing it. That means leaving everything that you ever depended on to make a step out that seems crazy to everybody else. But if God has told you to do it, it's going to happen. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. If he's told you, you really, really need to have a confirmation, yeah. right, to that. Yeah. Well, when God spoke to me, I knew that I knew that I knew. My mom said, where are we going? I said, I don't know. He just said, go. <laughs> My wife said, well, if that's what he told you, let's do it. So watch this. What time is this that we're coming in, that we're just coming out of? In, in that time of faith, it's a time of testing. Right? It's a time of struggling. It's a time of stretching. It's a time of believing. It's a time of war. Let me tell you something. You know, physically and spiritually, literally at this time, they was at a war over a temple. That's right. 2,000 years ago. It's a time of rejection. People will reject you when you step out and do what it is that God has called you to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can expect that because it doesn't seem logical to them. Right, right. It seems illogical. Right. But when God has told you, like Abraham, look, I'm taking you to your land that flows with milk and honey. I want you to leave your father who was an idol maker in Babylon. He made statues of, you know, uh, who was over Babylon. Um, what's his name? Uh he made statues of Baal. And the guy said, hey, leave your father. I'm going to take you to a place. Where are we going? Just go. Yeah. That takes a lot. Yeah. But the question is, oh, also, let me tell you about what happens here. Because this is an important time. So when you're going through a time of testing, a time of struggling, a time of stretching and believing, a time of war and rejection, it's time, it's also a time for miracles. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Yes. It's a time for miracles when you believe. What did Denise said? Hey, this guy over here, we're with God. Right? Judas Maccabees. If you with God, then come with me. Because we're going to believe our little 5,000 men army is going to go take out about 30,000 men. Yeah. That takes some belief. Yes. You just don't go 5,000 against 30,000 men. Are you crazy? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? Did you see the army over there? But yeah, if God is with us, right. He's going to go before us and make a way. And if you believe that, come with me. Come on. Right? That's what God says. Amen. If you continue believing, the miracles will come forth. Amen. All you have to do is believe. Amen. You make a step out on what God's told you. Yeah. And bam. You know what? You know when, you know, you know when rent gets paid, when you believe in God, or when provision comes? The last day. That's it. The day before. Amen. Yeah. Two weeks struggling. You battling, going through stuff. My God, please, I know. And then, and then uh, why, Lord, why is it always right at the last moment? 
Because he's trying to teach you something. Yeah. To rest in him. Yeah. Watch this. But the question is, do you really believe in miracles? Because this is a day of miracles. Oh. This is a day they lit the lamps in the temple. And they burned for eight days with one day's oil supply. That's a miracle. Yes. It was a miracle that that little bitty army was able to overcome the Greeks and Syrians to be able to do what they did. Number one, let me tell you, they're priests, they're Levites, they're not warriors. Right. They didn't battle at war. Levites didn't battle. They didn't, they didn't fight. But God says that He will teach the hands and strengthen the hands for war. Right? It's, cra it's it crazy. But the question is, do you really believe in miracles? Do you really believe what God has spoken to you? If you do, you will continue walking no matter what is thrown at you. It's a time of rededication. If I really believe that God has told me something, and let me tell you something, I've been stretched many a times. Yeah. You can ask my mom and my wife. Yes. Things that seem absolutely crazy. But when you know that you know that God has spoken to you, well then you need to stand strong in it. And say, look, I don't care what you said because you're going to have people try to persuade you. That just don't make walking around sense. I know it don't. Your thoughts are not his thoughts and his ways, your ways are not his ways. He got some crazy ways sometimes. Yeah. Right? But if he told you something, Amen. expect it. It's going to happen. Yeah. But you, you have to trust God. That's it. Yeah. Let me tell you what's going to happen now. Because now, once God speaks to you, oh, it's great and marvelous and mighty, and man, God spoke to me. He's going to do this, and man, we're going to do that. And, and the next day, the enemy is in your yeah. ear. Yeah. Yeah. Did he really tell you that? <laughs> Where's the provision? Yeah. Hey, the countdown, 15 days to the rent, 14 days to the rent, all the way down to, you know, well, are you going to go uh, borrow money? You know who's got the money. You can just go run and get it. Or are you going to trust him and what he's told you yeah. to do. All right, Lord, watch. I want to talk briefly about Hanukkah to you. Kesslev 25, or we'll just say December 25th. It was a time that they rededicated the temple of God. Meaning the temple had been put out of order. There was no altar, no laver, no lampstand or showbread table, no altar of incense, and the ark was gone, taken away in 586 B.C. You realize that unless the Jews have a house, they can't worship God. Do you know the Jewish people right now can't worship God? Do you know how crazy that is to be without a house? Because that's where, in that house, they served God. That's why they want a temple again. So they can begin to worship. What did God call the children of Israel? Come out in the wilderness that you may sacrifice and worship unto me. Worship requires sacrifice. Let me, man, let me tell you something. Big sacrifice. When you step out and do what it is that God has called you to do, it's a sacrifice, right? So Hanukkah, watch this. Hanukkah is made up of two words. It's kind of crazy. The first part of Hanukkah means rest. So when God tells you to do something... Because he says, rest. Are you kidding me? How can you rest not working for whatever it is? How can you rest? But you need to rest in him. Yeah. Yeah. Hanukkah, the first part of Hanukkah means rest. The last part means 25. What does that mean? That God gave them rest on Kesslev 25. Or we'll say December 25th. He gave them rest from war. So the battle now is over. You've been battling. You've been going through things. Today it ends. Today it ends. This is when they ended the war. The war was over. God gave them rest. What did they do? They physically now reset the temple back up so they can worship God and sing hallelujah. Amen. You've provided. You've done what you said you was going to do. Amen. This is that day. Mm -hmm. wow. This is that. Listen, 
But the physical temple that they were setting up and putting in order was only the spiritual meaning of what you have been going through because God wants you to rededicate your temple, put your house back in order so that you can begin to serve again. Yeah. Your house can serve God. Yes, Lord. That's the word. We look at all of these physical things that are in here. That ark is Christ. That cross is Christ. Baptized in fire, that's Christ. He's the light of the world. He's the showbread. He's the altar of incense, the sweet aroma that went to the Father. He is the laver, the water. He's the Word of God, and He's the one that made the ultimate sacrifice. He's the lamb that died on the altar. Everything you see in here, He's Noah's ark. He is. He is. Amen. These are just pictures to show you who He is. He's all of these things. And now, think about this. God, for the first time in one year, this church left Poplarville one year ago, November. And we moved in the wilderness of sin and testing to see if the house was going to stay together. Yeah. You think all the pieces was taken down, put in a moving cart, and we wandered. And right now, by, you think it's by one, one word in season is better than 10,000 words out of season? Do you think it's by any chance that we get the building at the same time one year to the same month? Full circle. Yes. Bam. And look, the pieces that were set up a year ago, look, the house is now set up again back in order so we can worship. Wow. But this is just a reflection of the pieces that's in you. Yes. Yeah. Remember, it was the enemy that got into the house yeah. and desecrated it. And took the pieces out. So guess what? That house, that person can no longer serve God. Because their pieces were not in order no more. If you look at this, the way this is set up, altar laver, uh, altar laver, the altar of incense, the menorah, the showbread table, it's in the shape of a cross. Now, because when you take up your cross and follow Him, now you're back in order again. You see, the whole goal of the enemy... Yeah, he doesn't. He wants to stop the Jews from worshiping in a physical house. But the whole the whole purpose of the enemy is to get you out of order so you don't worship in your house. There's no service in your house. And remember, the house of God was all about service, serving. Yes. Pretty amazing, huh? Watch this. So. Hanukkah, I told you what it was about. God gave them rest from war on the 25th of Kislev, which is December. Let me just make a little connection. Everybody you're hearing right now, I'm going to be point blank with you about me. This is, you run to people and they say, Merry Christmas to you right now. December 24th, Christmas Eve. It's okay. They think Christ was born at this time. He wasn't born at this time. He was born in September or October. Am I going to make an issue of that? No, I'm not. I'm not going to make an issue about it. But let me tell you what happened today. On this day. Now, if you want to just let me fill you in on it. Real quick. Jesus' ministry was 33. His ministry was three and a half years. He stepped into the priest's office at 30. His ministry was three and a half years. He died in April, May, Passover. We know he died. We know he began his ministry at 30. It was three and a half years or 42 months. That's all over in the Word. So if Jesus died in April, watch this. If he died in April and his ministry was three and a half years, watch this. I'm going to show you how important this day is. Amazing. 
So I'm going to make a full circle from April. Go all the way around back to April. That's one year. Go all the way back around to April. That's two years. Go all the way back around to April. That's three years. His ministry was three and a half years, so I've got to go back six months. Go back six months, that's halfway. That's September, October. Jesus was born fifth. Something amazing happened today. Wow. You know, we sang about, I love, I love, I love your presence. You know what? When they set the temple up in order, the Holy Spirit came on this day, December 25th. What? Yes. The Spirit, the presence of God came back into His temple today. Kessler 25. You know what that means? Now if we follow, we know that Christ was born in September or October beyond the shadow of a doubt. All you have to do is back up nine months. This is the very day that Gabriel came down. Watch. Remember this day? They lit the, the, the lampstand back up, the light of the world. Right? They lit the menorah back up. It burned eight days. Eight is the number of new beginnings. It's a new beginning for you. This is the very day that Gabriel announced to Mary that she would be pregnant with child and the Spirit of God came down and made a deposit of His Spirit in the temple Amen. of Mary. Amen. Oh, son. <laughs> and nine months later, He was born. Yeah. Wow. A very important day. Do you think it's by coincidence? It's a day that God gave His Spirit and parted it into a woman. Clothed Christ in the flesh. That would be the only way He could break through the veil to reveal Himself who He was. That it's on this very day that the temple of God is put back in order again so that the Spirit can fill you again. Amen. Bam! <laughs> wow! This is the day the lights came on! Amen. And everything was set up in order. I didn't plan this. I didn't say, we're going to do this on the 24th because this is what happened. I asked my wife, when we going to, after we do everything, when we going to, you know, you know, have our first service. She says, okay, I just, let's do it on Hanukkah. And the Lord said, go look at it. Go study it. Now let me tell you, if that's okay, if that even is kind of like, well, you know, maybe you could have still let it. Okay. Well, how is it that it was just two nights ago, Thursday night, we finished doing what it was we had to do right here. Build the wall. Rebuild the temple. Set the doors back up. That's exactly what they did on this day 2,000 years ago. Amen. Wow. Amen. We couldn't have had church before this Saturday. That's right. This is the day we finished it, Thursday. Well, we have church on Saturday. That was just wow. One day ago? That's God. Yes. This is the day the house is put back in order. That means He wants to put your house back in order. This is the day that the Holy Spirit came down and impregnated Mary because, because God wants to impregnate you with His Word. Hallelujah. He wants your house back in order. Yes. Amen. Your house has been out of order. Yes. yes. And when it's in order, He will begin to use you again. Because your mind will be on His plans. Yes. Amen. Yes. His kingdom. Yes. You will be Christ-minded, Christ-focused, yes. so you can allow God to use you yes. in His kingdom. Yes. Watch this. It says... God gave them rest from war on December 25th. Kessler 25. Kessler 25. Or should I say December 25th? It fell out at this time right now. But it, Kessler 25 can move from November to December. It moves through the month. Just so happened to fall out right now today. And God's time is amazing. 
Watch this. Now, you think when the angel came down to glorious, you know, all full of glory and light and said, Hey, Mary, today you're going to be pregnant. I'm going to impregnate you. Oh, let it be thou done unto thine handmaid and thy servant. Yes, it was. But guess what? Oh, you think that's it? That's it? Well, let me just tell you something about... It required faith on Mary's part. It required believing. It required struggles. It required risk. She's a Hebrew, pregnant, out of wedlock. That's death. Yeah. That's death. Take her to the front. She's engaged to a man. That if he would have put her away openly, she would have been stoned. We look at the little story. Bubba, she went through some stuff. It ain't like the Jesus of Nazareth, the pretty Mary and all that. Oh, let it be done unto thou handmaid and everything is, is all good and hunky-dory. Now she's got to tell a man she's with. Hey, I'm not pregnant by a man, but I'm, you know, I mean, I'm, not, I'm pregnant by God. What? Are you, are you, are you crazy? I mean, think about that. It took God to intervene on Joseph's part to let him know she is and has been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. He would have put her away. He's a man like you and me. I come home and find out my wife's pregnant by another man. <sighs> come on. Well, that would be a miracle. <laughs> and one, because there ain't no baby parts there no money gone. But you know what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> the baby parts is gone. Watch this. So, not only that, she had, she had to believe God she, and have faith in it. She had to go through struggles, risk of death, and rejection. Joseph had to leave. Joseph don't want to be in their hometown, number one, number one, and she's pregnant. Because number, number two, you had... Forn you fornicated with her before you married? The Jews would have killed him too. Bring them both out. Let's stone them. That's what the law says. Put them to death. <laughs> so the, the angel intervenes in a dream to Joseph. Gabriel, hey, it's a what child. So they go. Watch this. Hanukkah. I'm going to tell you what it's known for because this is what applies to you. It's known as the Festival of Lights. It's known as the Feast of Dedication. It's a time to dedicate. It was a rededication. Time of rededicating. Let me tell you another thing. What's important about this day? This is the day the doors open. Yeah. Eight days later, they closed. And you're out. You heard me? It's known as the Festival of Lights. It's known as the Feast of Dedication or Rededication. It's about putting the temple back in order into service. It's a time of new beginnings right now. Time of new beginnings. This is a time of new beginnings. Why? Eight is a number of new beginnings. The eight, they set up the, the, uh, the menorah, the, um, the Hanukkah candle had eight branches, one in the center made nine. Eight for the number of new beginnings because in the temple the light burned for eight days on one day's supply. God was in the ministry of multiplying oil. He did it for Elijah and Elisha, remember? Remember that? Let Turn it on and just keep filling. A time, check this out. Right now is a time of moving from one place to another. It's a time of moving. Wow. Is that crazy? You find yourself in a move? You find yourself being led? Well, it's the Spirit. Watch this. It's a time of miracles and healings. How do we know that? Well, this was a time of a miracle because the light that was one day's oil supply only burned, I mean, burned for eight days. That was a miracle. It was a miracle that they was even able to take back the temple. Yeah. That's where God's healings and praise and worship and people were healed at this time right now. 
It's a time of fire. It's when they all over right now in Israel 2,000 years ago from city to city they lighten fires everywhere. We just come through a time of fire, huh? Yeah. Tennessee was burning. Yeah. But within yourself, watch this. It's a, it's a time. It's a time for service. I'm going to hit that hard. Because whatever gift it is that God has given you is meant to serve His house. Yeah, that's right. His house. And giftings you guys got. And mama. They're made for one thing. Not to serve other gods. Not to sing other things to other people. To receive glory and honor. It's made to be up here on this altar. You know why they call us an altar? Because it's a place of death. And I remember I said this in church. If you're not dead, get off this altar. Amen. Yeah. If you're not dead, you don't belong up here. Because right. you won't be able to take the fire. An altar is a place of death. You can only worship God out of the death of your flesh. Your flesh has to die so that you can worship Him now in spirit and in truth. That means there ain't nothing for the flesh. Well, the flesh, remember, at the altar, I was so impressed by this this morning. You saw me get up and walk to the back? Hey, I'm going to show you what I did. Look what I did. I was up here at service. And this is the brazing altar, and I'll get into this later with you guys. And while I was back there worshiping, I remember this lamb skin come from Israel. Right? I had this lamb skin up in here. And I'm in worship up there. That's skin. That's flesh. You know what God told me? Go get the flesh off the altar. He don't burn flesh on the altar. The flesh is to be ripped off. You know what that means? That means to be done away with. Yeah. So then there ain't nothing left for the flesh. Because the flesh is gone. Now it's not about what you want. Right. It's about, because you have been ripped off. Flesh is gone. Now, it's about what God wants. Yeah. And your flesh is not in it. God told me while I was there, go get the flesh off the altar. You can't put flesh on the altar. Let me tell you something. The flesh crawls up there on the altar, it's going to scream. Because as soon as the fire hits it, ha ha! <laughs> no, it's going to go off, son. Ah! You're supposed to already be dead. That's why you can only worship the Lord in spirit and in flesh. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. <laughs> spirit and truth. The flesh has to be removed. Wow. Get the house in order. Remove the flesh. It's a time of miracles and healings. It's a time of fire. It's a time of service. A time of sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to serve God. When you got a, God tells you to do something that you really don't want to do. Whether it's go over here or go over there. Do something that you don't want to do. That's why it's called a sacrifice. Guess what? God, you know, God, He, uh, He don't expect you to do that. No, He requires it. Right. <laughs> this is not something He just expects you to do as a believer in Christ. It's a requirement right. yeah. that you lay down your life so that He can serve through you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This place would have never gotten done if God didn't get into the people yeah. that were here Amen. to make curtains, Amen. carpet, wood, rent paid, lights turned on, 
in pe working people, yeah. cleaning, scrubbing the floors, cleaning the kitchen, clean, getting everything in this whole place in order. Why? So that when you guys came in today, we, as the children and the priests of God, can serve you a buffet. Amen. Amen. First, meet your physical need. So now we can speak to you spiritually. Why? Because God loves you. That's yes. right. <laughs> that is amazing stuff. The restaurant is open again. Yes. You tell people where you go at, tell them you go to the restaurant. Oh. That's what I want you to tell them. Where you go to church at? The restaurant. <laughs> Don't say the Citadel no more. The Citadel will be out there. Look for the building with the restaurant on it. Yeah. Look for the building with the restaurant on it. Five years ago, right now, the Lord said, I asked the Lord, what you want to name the church? He told me the restaurant. My wife will bear witness. Yeah. I spoke it out loud. I said, the Lord said, name the restaurant. Name the building the restaurant. You know where I was? You know where I was when the Lord told me to name the building the restaurant? Where he lives at. Ernest of all. Yeah. Where he's from. Is that coincidence? Oh, I just so happen to be out there in the, the Homer area. Where are you? Where are they? Over there by them Boogalees. God says, I want you to call that place there the restaurant. And that guy right there whose name means a deposit of the spirit is from that there area. He owned the building. He going to have a sign up there that said the restaurant. That's where I want you to go. You did that pretty good. <laughs> Well, that's fine and dandy with all the information that I just gave you. Yeah. Yeah. But all that information didn't come. And he just said, the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Five years later, to the day that I met him, I pull up. And he says, hey, that dead restaurant there next door, that's for you. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> He's amazing. These things you can't do. That's right. You and I can't do this. <laughs> this is prophecy spoken five years ago yeah. that came true today. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, God is working. Yeah. You know what that means? God's working in that man's life. Yeah. And loves him. Yeah. Yeah. And has a plan for him. Yes, he yeah. does. And everybody in this place. Amen. But it takes all of us coming together to put God's house back in order. It's about service. Yes. This church is founded on Jesus Christ. Yes, it is. And it will be built up on serving God. Amen. How? By serving others. That's right. If you have a gift... I want to know about it and I want you to use it. I don't care what it is. If you don't know what your gift is, we got people in here who can tell you. Through the word, draw out your gift to tell you what it is that God has gifted with you with to serve in his house. Everybody has different gifts. But if you're not here using your gift, I believe in the nine gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. I believe in the flow of the Spirit. Yeah. The move of the Spirit. Yeah. I don't believe in shutting the Spirit down. Amen. He has got to run this place. Yeah. Yeah. Not me. Yes. Right. Not you or not anybody else. Right. It's got to be by the head. Yeah. Right. Right? right? So listen, if you have a gift and God has called you to do something, man, we want you to use it here. If you believe in healing, you have the gift that you believe when people lays hands on you, they're healed. I want you to get up out of your seat, go walk up to somebody that you know needs healing, and lay your hands on them because God has gifted you in that area. And get somebody else to come with you yes. that you know believes too. Yes. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're a preacher, preach. If you're a singer, sing. If you're a worker, work. And do what it is that God has called you to do. Because I'm not here to hinder you. Yeah. I'm here to help you get into your position so that you can serve. So that God can use you to serve others.
this is the time and I'm just about finished. Hey, you know what's most amazing about this time? It's a time of forgiveness oh, yes. and compassion. Yes. Wow. Anything that was ever done is wiped away today. Amen. Is wiped away today. It's new beginnings. Yes. It doesn't matter if you struggled and failed. Yes. It doesn't matter. Amen. If you struggled and you made it through, great. There's another struggle coming. <laughs> and you know what? You won't you might not pass every test. I know I didn't. Amen. But there ain't nothing, listen, that's all about growth and growing. Amen. God is getting this house, these people, in order to do what? To serve the people that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Those that walk in that door. Greet them. Grab them. Love on them. Ask them what they want. What you can do for them. How you can help them. Can I serve you? Would you like some coffee? Do you want something to eat? Man, let me tell you what the Lord showed me. Maybe the word won't come from me, but the word can come from you. Just simply being here and telling somebody what God has done in your life and what you're going through. It just don't come from one person. Right. Where would the body be? Listen, there ain't nobody in here the head. Is anybody a head? Well, guess what? From the, from, the, from the head down, all of these parts are made to work. Right. Yeah. Every joint provides. And one joint doesn't provide, yeah. the other joint starts overcompensating for it. Now you got two bad joints because the other joint that wasn't made to carry that load is now carrying it and suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4. Yeah. It's a time, listen, of celebration. A time to return. That's what they said. They set the temple up. Man, did you hear? The temple set back up in order. Return back to Jerusalem. Time of return. It's a time of the Holy Spirit when He came and over, overshadowed Mary. The rededication of the temple was about putting the temple, your temple. And I'm closing right now. Here it is. This is the word the Lord gave me. The rededication of the temple was about putting... Hey, where you at? Ruthie. Come up here and get on that piano, the keys. The rededication of the temple was about putting the temple your temple back in service. Why? Because the enemy shut the, the temple service down in which God was no longer allowed to be worshipped. You know, understand that? The physical temple, so you get, God gives us the natural to understand the things of the Spirit. The physical temple of God that was over there in Israel. The enemy came in there Shut that temple down. Shut it down. They couldn't have no more service. They couldn't serve God no more. It was done. It was, it was man, you talk about a sad time. I mean, these, these guys were mourning. That natural picture of that temple was a picture of you and me. Has the enemy got into your temple? Have you listened to the things that he was saying and got you out of order so you can't serve no more? Because you can't hear? You're not in order? You're following your flesh and not God's will? Because that's what that physical temple represented. God gave us the natural temple to show us how the enemy got into it, took everything out of order and desecrated it so it couldn't even be used anymore. But this is the same day that God came in and set his house back up in order. <laughs> Man, that is not something exciting. You say you want to be used by God? Man, it requires faith. But the first thing it requires is dying to yourself. It's not about you. 
It's about what God wants. It's about you asking Him, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? How can I serve you? Maybe it's serving Him with your voice. Serve Him with it. Serve Him with it. Whatever gift God has given you. I don't know. The rededication of the temple was about putting the temple, your temple, back into service. The enemy shut the temple service down in which God was no longer allowed to be worshipped. Has the enemy... How does God... When you shut the temple down, God is not allowed to be worshipped. That means if the enemy shuts you down, you're no longer a testimony for Jesus Christ because your testimony causes others to worship Him. Man, let me tell you what God has done for me. Well, if you're not doing that no more, your, your temple is desecrated. It's out of order. No longer people will worship God because you're not a temple that's in service any longer. Has the enemy shut the temple down from serving Him? Do you feel out of order and a mess? Well, God has good news for you. He wants to let you know all is forgiven. And today, He wants you to rededicate and allow Him to put your temple back in service again. Wow. That's what today is all about. One word in season. It's a time of new beginnings and fresh starts. So let's serve Him together. Let's serve Him together. Because that's what we've been called to do. How, you might ask. By serving in His house. You serve others. It's about serving others. Let me explain to you now what the real battle is about. And I'm going to give it to Ruth. I'm going to let her take it. And the altar up here is open for you. Man, you know me with altars and open things. And, but let me tell you something. I believe and I know that God just wants to open this place up for you. It ain't between me saying I know who wants to stand up and raise a hand. It's between you and God. Let me tell you what this is really all about. You see, the real battle, and I want you to listen to me really, really, really good. Because I'm going to bring everything that I just talked about to tell you what it's really about. The Bible says that Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants you dead. He wants you dead. He wants to kill you physically kill you. He wants to take your temple away from you. Because if you don't have a temple, you can't serve God. You don't have a body. What does all of this really mean? You see the real war of what's going on really, 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 really is that you think you're in a battle just this little things that are going on? No. You in a battle for your eternal temple body that's in heaven. You see, that's where the real war is. You are battling flesh and the enemy to get what it is that God has promised you. That's a new robe, a new body. Because in that body, you will worship Him for eternity. That's where the real battle is. If He can get you out of the Lord and get you dead, you get no new temple. You get one thing, hell. I'm not a hell preacher. But the real struggle is He wants to take you out. He wants to get you doing what it is that you want to do so you don't receive your new temple in heaven, your new body. So let's pray. Father, Lord, I delivered the word, Father, that you told me, Lord.
God, I, I lift the people up here today, Lord, even myself, as just a man and a person, a one that battles in the flesh, Father. Lord, help us, Father. I ask right now, Lord, on the very day that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, Father, and had a depart, you, Lord, you departed, uh, imparted the Spirit of God in Mary. And she was carrying Jesus inside. Father, that same word is for us today. Father, I pray that you will impart your Holy Spirit, your word, into us so that, that we will carry Jesus within us, Father, for the work of the ministry, Father. So, Lord, what you did.